when, in your opinion, gentlemen, do you want to take it around, you know, behind the back of the bar and just end it and leave it? It's not worth trying to fix it because it's already broken. Day one. Day one? As, <laughs> Day as one. soon as you have that feeling? As soon as you have that feeling. And then, well, you know how the, when, like, the Persians go to war in Sparta or whatever, and they say, mm. you're dead today, and you go fight to stay alive? It's that approach. So, yeah, it's dead already. She can win. She can win you back for the second time, but you got to take the approach that it's already over and you're just using a training partner. You've written some articles or an essay, Ryan, on like steps to try to regain the frame. And that's like the starting point too, isn't it? Just Dude, consider it dead. That's going to be book two. Yeah, first step. It's the video Operation Scorched Earth. I've had essays and that on it before too, but the best ones, because otherwise what happens, and I know I'm kind of disjointed here. I haven't really thought this through as like a coherent piece yet. But initially what happens is guys will sign on They'll type into Google, my wife won't fuck me, whatever. Mm. And then they get here and then the guys start talking about things like dread, you know, working out, building boundaries. A lot of the chasing excellence stuff you say overlaps a hell of amount with it, which is awesome. And then two years into it, they realize, because they were just doing it to win their wife back. And the last thing their wife wants is that kind of pressure. It's like when you take a girl out on a great date and then she like balks at the idea of putting out because now she thinks you're entitled to it or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then guys realize after two years, well, I've been doing this all for her and she completely nukes it. And then they realize it's a waste of time if you're not doing it for yourself. And to save yourself two years of hassle, just assume your wife is dead to you. You're basically working so that you never make this mistake again. And she has until you're done and ready to hopefully win you back. And mm -hmm. if she doesn't, then the plan's already there. Mm. That makes yeah, sense. I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I think that um, it's, it's the basic thing is you, if you, you have to understand how to have frame to begin with. And somebody got into this relationship without that. So, you know, all you're doing is working on yourself and rebuilding yourself at first in order to, and then learning at what frame looks like and how I would have that. And then she either buys into that or not. And then you start taking steps basically to exit the relationship. But I always recommend if guys are understand frame and, and they get into a long-term relationship that you always have the exit strategy in mind. It's part of leadership and it's part of planning for anything. And maybe I think a little bit more too mission focused, right? With military stuff, but you always have that though. You always have your exit strategy. What does it look like? But here's why you want that. It's not because you're focused on that and trying to end the relationship all the time. It's because when guys don't have the exit strategy in mind, then they're fearful. They're mm -hmm. fearful of the unknown. They don't know what that looks like. I've had a lot of guys come into consultations. They're married. They don't have a prenup. They don't know what it looks like. You know, they haven't talked to an attorney yet. They don't know what it would look like in that divorce. And so they're afraid to get their balls back. They're afraid to execute standards and boundaries and start to get that frame with themselves. Like they, they lost frame in a relationship. They probably didn't have frame with themselves. You know what I mean? And so like, it, you know, they, they're afraid to do that though, because they don't know what the exit looks like. So when you start off, it doesn't matter whether you're cohabitating, like Ryan and I both have cohabitating LTRs. Uh, Rose married, Rich, you're in a non. What's that? <laughs> I can <laughs> you co and you cohabitate. He cohabitates <laughs> and he's married. And then and then Rich <laughs> and, then, and then Rich, you know, you don't cohabitate, but whatever that looks like, you know what the exit looks like. Then you're not fearful when you execute the strategy that you need to execute to either get yourself back get the relationship back or end it, whichever it turns out, you know, what's your take so. Rolo when it comes to, you know, this is, this is the final straw, you know, we've crossed the last line in the sand. I, like, when does that show up for you? All right. So I, I'm going to, I'll tell you what my personal, personally, what I think. And then I will also tell you what I have learned from experience from working with guys who are like in their like sixties and in some cases, even seventies uh, getting into that point. Like it just as what Paul was just saying a second ago is you get kind of, um, get used to you get accommodated to a lifestyle and you you'd be surprised what you could like anything can can become normal and especially when you are in a state of necessity and i think that's the first thing that guys need to assess i if you've read my first book you already understand this i've said this but in, in uh was iron rule of tomasi number one you know frame is everything and the frame that you enter into that relationship with is going to set the tone if nothing else i mean i'm saying it's it's immutable but i'm just saying it will set the tone 
for your relationship. So what you will tolerate while you are single, you will more than tolerate when you are, when you're locked in and you're committed to that. So I don't think enough guys think about that first off because that has a lot to do with like uh, setting boundaries. And I, I get into this conversation sometimes with, I think with Brian a couple of times as well is I'm, I'm the demonstrate do not explicate guy. And I, I get to a point where I have to, it's not so much the behavior as it is the motivation for that behavior. So when she is crossing boundaries, whatever those that happen to be, uh, it is much better to demonstrate that that was a boundary. You crossed it. And these are the consequences of it instead of delivering an ultimatum, which is what most guys will do. When most guys, when guys get into a relationship, like I said, they will take and tolerate things that they would never have tolerated before, or even like from their best friend, they would like come to blow, like it would punch your friend in the face for some of the stuff that you will, you're willing to tolerate when you're in a relationship because most guys enter into a relationship when they're necessitous and they go in with a scarcity mentality. And so the idea of rocking the boat or experimenting or like um, even uh, I, I had this uh, conversation with Sterling Cooper because Sterling was talking about how to have better sex, how to get your wife to have sex with you and how to like sex her up the, the proper, you know, porn star way, I guess. And he told me the same thing I hear from a lot of other guys, which is I could never do that. I don't want to experiment because if I upset the boat, then the boat will sink. It'll capsize if I try to do those things that when you get into that situation, you're kind of you're kind of lost. So you have to start with the as, as Paul was saying and, and Ryan was saying, you have to start with the ending in mind. So what is it that you're, what is your predominant character going to be? What is, are you going to be predominantly alpha? Do you have a frame into which she wants to enter into? And what are, what, what, what do you want out of that? Like genuine desire is something that I definitely want out of all my relationships. And I learned that the hard way by tolerating stuff. By, I, again, I, I came to this knowledge, not because I was perfect at it, but because I screwed it all up at one point and, and, uh, and learned what it was that I was, what I was doing. I also learned that when I didn't care, that's when women came around. I talked about this on Sunday on my Sunday show yeah. is when I started making myself my mental point of origin. And I didn't have a word for it back then, but when I started focusing on the things that I wanted to do, and that was my, my main, like almost tunnel vision focus, that's when I found that women found me the most attractive when I wanted to be a rock star in, in 1989, right? When, when I was, when I was working towards that and having a good time and I was only focusing on what I wanted to do. That's when I suddenly, like guys will say this, when you're just ignore the girls and they'll come and they'll show up. And in a way it's kind of true, but it's because you're focusing on something else and you're creating this world into which they want to enter into instead of you being necessitous and finding the girlfriend and going, Oh, you're the best one I've ever had. I'll never find a girl like you. You'll never, if you can break out of that mentality before you get into a relationship and then realize what it is that you are willing to tolerate and what you will not tolerate. That's when you can start to have at least a mature relationship.